So I know I've done videos in the past just showing off templates and those templates were never really meant to be copied down and just used for one of three type of situations depending on your game. But instead they were meant as guides to help you make your own templates to better your gameplay in the future. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to actually make your own tank templates depending on specific goals like do you want to use them to attack infantry, do you want to attack tanks, or do you want them to be used to support naval invasions. I'm going to cover everything you ever need to know again regarding how to make a good tank division. I'm going to be covering the different types of tanks, the support, how to get the different tanks, the variants, and everything you can possibly imagine that can help you make a really good tank template in the future and be able to change it on the fly depending on how your game's going. When designing a tank template in Hoi 4, there's a few rules of thumb you always want to consider. First off, always try to keep your division organization over 30. If you're going to be going down Mobile Warfare Doctrine, this does give organization bonuses to tanks. And if you haven't done it yet, you can always go to 25 and then go down Blitzkrieg, which will then boost you over 30. Next, consider where you're going to be fighting and design the template accordingly. If you're a multiplayer and you're the USA, Africa is going to be an absolute mess. With very low supply zones already in Africa, and then you have a bunch of allied troops packed on the east plus France's army in the west, you're not going to have a great time when you get down to the logistics side of things. This is why you need to really consider where these guys are going to be fighting first and then design the template around that. Lastly, don't attack just to attack. I'm guilty of this all the time because of tunnel vision. If you're going up against, say, a German tank division in 1941 in multiplayer, chances are they've already got medium threes. If you're using a tank template designed around anti-infantry and you see an enemy tank division and you think you can take it out, all you're probably going to be doing is throwing a baseball against a German Tiger tank. And this is only going to be giving him more XP, boosting him ever closer to getting the great, beautiful 25-75% to 75 bonuses of veterans and seasoned units that are going to completely wreck you later on. Light, medium, or heavy tank. The main differences between these tanks is armor, speed, firepower, resources, and cost. Light tanks have incredibly light armor, however, they have absolutely amazing speed when considering going up against the rest of the tanks. However, normally it's not that great of a bonus because the fastest truck you can get is only 12 kilometers an hour and the tank itself for light tanks is 14. So really, unless you're planning on using an exclusive light tank division, speed really shouldn't be that major of a factor. Next, we get to medium tanks. They have a huge upgrade in armor, almost more than double. But they do unfortunately lose quite a bit of speed, so they are a little bit slower than the motorized units pulling the entire template down in speed, however, these are pretty good. They get a heck of an upgrade to piercing, and they also get some pretty good soft attack. It's almost the amount is the same as the light tank though. Really the main difference between these are the piercing, the speed, and the armor bonuses. And of course, the hard attack for going up against other armored units. Realistically speaking, light tanks are made to go up against infantry without anti-tank, medium tanks are meant to go up against medium divisions that may for example have anti-tank or might have some tanks with them. Then we get to heavy tanks which are incredibly slow. They can only go at a max speed at least in the 1941 tier of around 6 kilometers an hour. They are also the most expensive to make when you look at the resources required. However, it's kind of a trade-off if you really want to consider the tungsten or the chromium, depending on your situation. However, these are the most costly. Heavies are great. However, they have amazing armor compared to all of their other tanks. They've got the same armor of a medium and a light tank combined together. Normally because of these insane bonuses like their armor, their heart attack, and especially the piercing of these things and the production cost, they're great if you're going to be using them in certain situations like choke points down in El Alamein in Africa, or if you're going to be using them in northern France, for example, trying to hold off German troops or even breaking through as Germany. Now we get to the most powerful tank in the game, which is the Super Heavy. It is the least produced but most powerful tank in the game, Super Heavies. These guys have the absolute most armor, putting even a heavy tank to shame with 145 to 110. They have the most firepower, like piercing, putting the heavy to shame. They also have the least speed of any tank of the game though. They don't have great soft attack, but they do have some pretty good breakthrough. Realistically, these are only made to attack entrenched units in certain situations. It doesn't actually show it right here, but if you do add a super heavy tank to a template, you will get some bonuses for attacking forts later on. Which now you can see, this also gives us a bonus of 17% for just attacking a fort. 
Now let's talk about something that very, 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 and I do mean very, few people in the game actually surprisingly know about, and that is called self-propelled tank units. Or at least that's what I call them. You can access self-propelled tanks by researching the tank normally, and on the right hand side you'll see three little icons. You don't need DLCs to do this, this is in the very base game. On the right hand side you'll have three different options. The top one is a tank destroyer, the middle one is a self-propelled artillery, which is just kind of an artillery tank, and there are that is an SPAA, also known as a self-propelled anti-aircraft gun, also known as an AA gun as a tank. Now your tanks may not look like this, if they don't, don't worry about it, that's just because I have a mod on that I can't figure out how to turn off. Anyway, but the differences here are, this is a tank destroyer. This has the most piercing for that type of tank. If you look here, we have a basic medium tank, which these are all designed off of. The normal piercing is 81, but if you get a tank destroyer, your piercing, which is going up against enemy armor, goes up to 110. If you're going to be using a self-propelled artillery gun, the soft attack is 50, compared to the base tank at 25. And then, when you look at the AA, the base tank has absolutely zero, and the air attack is 32, which I'll get into in a minute. Now, unfortunately, each one of these has its own set of problems, though. The base armor of a medium tank is 80. The tank destroyer still has the same armor, but the self-propelled artillery version loses 30, bumping it down to 50. The piercing plummets to only 5, compared to the base 81 you start with. Soft attack doubles, compared to the normal 25 to the 50 on the artillery breakthrough plummets to three from 51 so really you need to really kind of figure out what you're going to be using these for and use them in those specific situations instead of using for example the earlier situation i explained instead of using a division centered around self-propelled artillery and aa using them against tanks isn't that great of an idea now when trying to figure out what kind of upgrades you should get for these tanks it's actually quite simple now when trying to decide how you can get more out of your tanks and your self-propelled type of units, you can always create a variant. All you have to do is go over here to build armored vehicles and then you'll see this little button on the side. You can then click this and it creates a variant. You can change the name up here to really whatever it is you want or you can upgrade the guns, armor and so forth. Now for basic tanks, you want to really upgrade the armor first and then the main gun especially mediums. Light tanks, people say the engine first, but really since motorized are not actually quick enough to even keep up, there's no point in doing that because it lowers the speed of the entire template. So, for medium tanks and heavy tanks, you really want to upgrade the armor first, then the main gun. Now let's talk about tank destroyers. If you're going to be upgrading tank destroyers, the only thing you're worried about is going up against other tanks that might be better than you. So what you can always do is upgrade the anti-tank armament, and as you can see, it first off lowers the speed a little bit, upgrades the soft attack a little but you're more concerned with the heart attack and the piercing which go up dramatically next is going to be the self-propelled artillery for this you're going to want to upgrade the artillery armament first because this is what they're going to be doing they're going to be going up against infantry but it only goes up about seven so it's really not that great of an idea to even upgrade these in the first place to only get seven more soft attack unless you're going to be throwing probably 20 like 20 combat width or 21 or 24 combat width worth of these into a division so unless you're going to be making a lot of these in a division there's not really a reason to upgrade the artillery armament on these next is self-propelled anti-air you actually don't ever really need to upgrade these the reason this is because if you add these in a division you remove the enemy air penalty bonuses where if you lose air superiority normally it's a penalty of around 25 percent if you have these each time you add one of these per 10 combat width, you remove part of the bonus. So if you ever want to totally remove the bonus, just add one self-propelled AA per 10 combat width and you completely remove the area penalty from the enemy having air superiority. Now to answer one of the silliest but the most common questions inside of the Hoi 4 community, and I get asked this all the time to the point it finally got annoying. Mechanized or motorized? Mechanized cost way more than a simple motorized the difference goes from 2.50 for a single truck to eight for a truck this really realistically speaking the mechanized units are about three times as costly and they cost one more steel but that's not really that big a deal now here's the thing though it's really up to you because if you add these to a template these can completely change the whole way the template works first off these are a lot slower so if i were you i would add motorized if you want to to a light tank division but mechanized to a medium and higher tank division because the speed is so much more 
lower, realistically speaking. Now, something else people don't know is if you get the very first version of the mechanized unit for any tank, one of the effects is it actually adds a 100% bonus to the hardness of the previous division, which is the motor, uh, <laughs> not the division, but adding a 100% bonus to hardness for the previous division. I'll get into all those stats in just a minute. Now, if we add just two mechanized units instead of the motorized, you can already see our defense goes up 52 points. Our breakthrough goes up eight, which isn't that big of a deal. Really, all it does that's a huge bonus is go up in your defense. It also brings up your HP just a little bit, so that's kind of cool. But the main point of the mechanized units is adding in your breakthrough and upgrading the defense. Now, let's talk about probably the most controversial part of this entire video. That is going to be support. If you don't know, you can add support to your tank divisions by opening up your template. Over here on the left hand side is your support. You can click and add anything that you wish. Now, first off, anti-air is an amazing thing to add if you don't have any air superiority options. Like if you know for a fact you are not going to have air superiority, it's a really good idea to add self-propelled AA on your side because of that penalty I told you about earlier. Next, anti-tank is great to have with your divisions, especially if it's a light tank division, so if they do go up against armor, they can still pierce something in the light tank variety. They won't be able to pierce something like a heavy tank division, but they'll still possibly pierce somewhere on the lower side of a medium. Artillery is always a must-have in my opinion. Artillery obviously is really good, but it adds soft attack bonuses of only 15, but that's still really important. Your defense goes down with it, your breakthrough goes down with it, your heart attack, it's not really enough to really matter too much, except for the soft attack. And 15 might be the little tiny difference you need to actually break through a division somewhere. However, if you have an amazing medium tank division, sometimes you actually won't need it. Engineers are obviously, again, a must-have. They add a huge bonus to your defense of the tank division, and then, really, that that's the main thing. They add entrenchment bonuses, attacks for forts, rivers, forests, hills, pretty much everything you could possibly think of. Engineers are one of the most important things to have in your division. The next is a recon company. You might wonder. They also upgrade the defense of the unit, and they also later on help you be able to decide what kind of tactic you really need to use best. If you use the correct tactic in battle, you can actually get bonuses against attacking enemy units or defending against them. So recon, engineers, and either an artillery, anti-tank, or somewhere, one of those two is really the most important things to have for support companies and is always a must and really easy to get. Next, let's talk about signal companies. This is where the most controversial part of this video is going to start. Signal companies, in my opinion, they're not worth it unless you're going to be using micro a lot. The main point of signal companies is to upgrade the initiative, so you can reinforce quicker in battle, but with tanks, it's really only good if you're really blitzing through. And for multiplayer at least, which I'm sure a lot of people watch this video do, it's really not worth it that much, because all it does is help you reinforce quicker, yes, but that only helps if you're smashing through them incredibly easy. So unless you've got something really, really, really good, it's not really worth it. At the same time, it does give you a bonus for attacking whenever you're using a battle plan order, which if you don't know what a battle plan order is, it's pretty much you just make a division, go up here, and then do... Pretty much, if you have a signal company, it'll actually speed up how quickly you plan your attack, which can go up to a 25% bonus in combat. But, again, because you really do have to micro and hoit for, especially in multiplayer, it's not really that worth it. Next is a maintenance company. This is only really there to help increase the reliability of your tanks and capture enemy equipment in the field. They also do increase the recovery rate just a little bit, but that's really not enough to make much of a difference to me. In my opinion, maintenance companies, unless you're going to use them in something incredibly expensive like heavy tanks or super heavies, otherwise, they're not really worth it because you can very easily get rid of this if you're using a 40 width tank division and you're making 20 medium tanks a day. Out of that 20 tanks, if you lose one or maybe two in a game, if that's not, that's probably not going to make much of a difference. Or if it's going to make too big of a difference for you, you've probably already lost. So maintenance companies, it's not really worth it either. Next, logistics companies are incredibly important depending on where you're fighting. Like for example, earlier when I was talking about going down to Africa if you're the USA, you might want to have a couple logistics companies because it's going to help you lower your supply usage by a lot. Especially if you can get to the third one here which is going to give you 30% off in total. Next, this is going to be 
this is probably the most controversial part of the video field hospitals for me at least in medium tank divisions when i play as the us field hospitals are one of the most important things i use the only reason is is because it lowers the xp loss and the trickle back the trickle back isn't that important for a tank division however the xp loss is the most important part of it the only reason it's so important is because if your tank division is getting hit repeatedly by somebody say on the german side and they've got much better tanks than you Every time they attack you, you're losing more and more men, which lowers your XP level. And if you have a division that's actually a rookie, which I don't think I've actually got any as Germany or I can swap them to really quick. But uh, let's just see here and I'll swap them back to infantry. Rookies get a 25% modifier in combat. So if you do actually lose enough XP to get down to that level, you're pretty much gone. There's no way that tank division, if it's already having issues when it's got no penalties, as soon as you lose enough guys to go down to green, you're out of luck. Your, your tank division is just gone. So in my opinion, field hospitals are one of the most important things to have in tank divisions unless you're going up against somebody with a medium three Germany and they've only got light tank ones or twos or even a medium tank one. So if you don't have anything to worry about, you don't have to worry about your guys getting hit too bad, ignore them. But if you're not entirely sure, field hospitals are great and you can always swap them out later on for another support company depending on how it's going. Next, the way Hearts of Iron 4 makes template stats is, is based on the average stats of the entire unit. So this means adding a single heavy tank, for example, to an all light tank division will actually increase the stats of all the tanks in it to have the stats of a heavy tank. As you can see here, our armor already went up by just adding one heavy tank, our Breakthrough went up only 16, our defense only went up 3, but the two main stats for this is armor went up 31 and piercing went up 34, or the soft attack went up only 11. So if we were to instead change it out and give it a safe, for example, heavy self-propelled artillery, our soft attack goes up 58 for the entire unit. Now this also works for tank destroyers, so if you add, say, a heavy tank destroyer which is in here somewhere if i can find it eh, there it is so a tank destroyer going in now adds the piercing up to 46 so now the entire division has the same stats as that heavy tank so you have all these light tanks now have almost the exact same stats of this heavy tank now one other thing too here really quick this isn't saying never make a division full of 40 width medium tanks for example i mean first off you should never do that and you'll understand why in a minute but this isn't saying all you ever have to do again after watching this video is add a heavy tank destroyer to a light tank division and this good to go. Instead, what happens is if you add right now, for example, our piercing only goes up 46. But if you say, for example, do what I'm doing here and you continuously swap out the division because it's going off of what's the average number for the whole division itself is what it's basing these stats off of. So by swapping them all out, now the piercing's up to 90 so in some situations it's good to do this and armor went up to 54 so remember it's based on the average so you can do half self-propelled artillery half tanks or you know or do all self-propelled artillery if you don't have to worry about armor just remember the stats when designing a template are based off of the main unit itself and what's the average of the template now so guys hopefully this video taught you a little something on how to actually make a tank division and how to use it in the future Thank you for watching. I will see you guys next time. Stay awesome.